Um, so I'm from China Media Group, a Chinese reporter based here in the UN. So I've actually re read the reports, and I see that when you're describing that um, students in Australia, university students in Australia are um, doing the protest um, to support Hong Kong protesters, you use them as silent uh, protests. But when you use uh, other students with who hold a different opinions, you describe the, them as pro-government and uh, pro-Beijing. Um, so in my understanding, it seems that anyone is against the Chinese government is um, on the right side of choose and the reality. And anyone holding different opinions, government is supported. So my question would be, where does this assumption or presumption come from? And also about uh, the Hong Kong protest, you say that when when policemen are exercising their duties, you use forcibly against the civilians or whatever this, this kind of words. But when you are describing the protesters when they are causing riots ac across the Hong Kong street, you say that uh, they are just choosing their different ways to, uh, to express their anger. And even they set fire on uh, an ordinary civilian in his 60s. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask, where do these double standards come from? Thank you. Well, I think they come from your imagination because you're not describing um, what we say accurately. So let's take the, um, the students first. You know, we're all for students having different points of view. They can be pro or anti-China. It's up to them. Our reporting, and, and Sophie can, can give more detail on this, but what we have found is that many Chinese students abroad are afraid to voice criticism of Beijing for fear of retaliation. Um, they feel that they're and they report to us that their comments are reported back to authorities and that there are repercussions for their family back home. Um, that's not something that happens with students who voice pro-Beijing sentiments. So this is not a double standard. This is just you know, a fact reported to us by students who feel that their academic freedom is very actively impeded by the Chinese government even abroad. This is part of the government's effort to extend its domestic censorship overseas. With respect to Hong Kong, we in no sense condone violence by the protesters. And I, I would, would dare you to you know, find a single statement in any of our publications that in any sense condone the violence. Our point that is that when police respond, whether to violence or to peaceful protest, they have to do it within the rules on legitimate use of force. And we've seen over and over use of um, tear gas against peaceful protesters. We've seen severe beating of protesters, which is not an appropriate response to um, peaceful or violent protesters. Um, and we've seen you know, large-scale detention of protesters, not all of whom, as far as we can tell, have been engaged in violence. So um, that's our concern. It's not a double standard. We're trying to hold the Hong Kong police to the same standards that we hold police around the world, which is not to use excessive force and to respect the rule of law and the rights of protesters. I understand that um, the Chinese mission wishes to speak also. OK, thank you for giving me the floor. Um, I just want to make a, a few remarks regarding the report. Uh, I just want to make a few remarks. I'm not. I'm not going to uh, raise any questions. My remarks first is that, yeah, I have been. Uh, my name is Jishen from Chinese Mission. I'm I'm covering the third committee, human rights issues here in the UN. Uh, first, that uh, what you said is uh, I have been listening very carefully. I have been going through uh, your report um, uh, just uh, very roughly, and I found that the report is full of uh, prejudices and uh, fabrications and ignore the uh, facts, factual information provided by my government repeatedly for all these years and picked up all these fabrications and prejudices and uh, making groundless accusations. We totally uh, reject the content of all these reports. Mm -hmm. The second is that um, we have been making every effort to uh, advance the human rights in, in China. Uh, the the human rights stories have been one of the most successful in the human race, including we have been lifting more than 700 million people out of poverty uh, for the past uh, 40 years. So any report talking about Chinese human rights 
without mentioning this, fail to be balanced and neutral. And any organization fail to mention that cannot claim to be uh, a human rights organization. Okay, and about your, your uh, entry into, into China, uh, Hong Kong is part of China, I think. So I think given what you said here, I think it's clear to all why you have been barred such entry. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ji Shen from uh, Chinese Mission. Uh, J I S H E N G. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. We'll give Ken the last word yeah. on this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let me let me just say a word then. Um, I mean, first. Um, we actually, if you note in, in the introduction, in my introduction to the World Report, we actually mentioned the fact that it was the emancipation of the Chinese people um, to actually in, engage in, in um, to lift themselves out of poverty. That, um, you know, is, is one of the great accomplishments within China of, of the last several decades. You know, whether that's the government's doing or whether it's just the government standing back from its prior policies of constraining the Chinese people is, is something we could discuss. Um, I would, um, you know, ask you what specific falsehood is there? You know, I mean, it's easy to kind of make these arguments about you're, you're false, you're biased, but what did we get wrong? You know, if there's something wrong, we obviously would change it. But, um, you know, it's like one of the reasons, what, the Chinese Foreign Ministry yesterday, one of the things they said is that, you know, I didn't recognize China's progress on human rights. You know, the progress like detaining a million Uyghurs and, and Turkic Muslims um, in, in Xinjiang, the progress like building the most intrusive surveillance state the world has ever seen, the progress like utterly shutting down every critic and, and, um, and civil society organization in the country, the progress like undermining the one country, um, two systems agreement um, for Hong Kong. I mean, yeah, that's the progress I didn't acknowledge. We rather just reported what happened, but we didn't call it progress. So, you know, if there's something we got wrong, please say so. But um, we were very careful here. We are, you know, only report the facts as best as we can. And, you know, rather than just give us this blank, empty rhetoric, please show us what we got wrong. I'm just going to add two quick points. One is that we regularly, in the course of doing research on issues across China, uh, send the Chinese government and different ministries letters asking questions uh, that's relevant to the work that we're doing. Uh, in the 14 years, I've been at Human Rights Watch, we have never gotten a single response. Um, and I also just want to clarify one point unambiguously, that people across China lifted themselves out of poverty after the government got its boot off their collective neck. Thank you. Sure.